All right, we are live. Super, super excited. Already see people um, waiting <laughs> on YouTube and in Facebook. So excited to see you guys here. Hello, hello, hello. So this is day two of our Total Technique Challenge. Um, we actually went live in three different locations um, last night. So let me go ahead. We were actually on YouTube and uh, within our Facebook group, and then also on IG. So super excited here. So let me go ahead and get started on IG as well. That way we don't leave anybody out. Um, and yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started in just a couple of minutes. We're going to let some people kind of start to hop in uh, once they receive the notification that we have started. Um, so hello, everyone on IG. Super excited to have you guys here. Uh, we have another amazing evening for our Total Technique Challenge. So first of all, I just want to give you all kudos and just say congratulations for showing up for yourselves last night. And then obviously, once again, showing up for yourselves tonight. So I know that it's been a while since we actually had um, a technique challenge and people have been wondering, when are the challenges? When are we um, able to sign up for the Pro Cheer Playbook program? And so it's coming. <laughs> it is coming. It is coming. I promise. Um, just so you know, we are opening up enrollment this Thursday into our Pro Cheer Playbook program. Not quite there yet, but on Almost. So on Thursday, we are officially opening up enrollment to our Pro Cheer Playbook program. That's the exact same program that um, Kies, who is joining us tonight, she graduated from and ended up making a pro soccer um, cheer team. It's also the exact program that Lizzie last night um, graduated from and ended up making the Miami Dolphins cheerleaders. So we have over a 70% success rate of our graduates becoming professional cheerleaders in that program. And we are giving away two $1,000 scholarships. So I'm going to repeat that. Two $1,000 scholarships on Thursday. And all you have to do is show up for yourself. Show up here live and your name goes in the hat. Um, you do your homework in our private Facebook group and your name goes in the hat. And then on Thursday, we are actually going to draw two people to be winners of that $1,000 scholarship to become a part of our Pro Cheer Playbook program that does kick off and launch on December the 1st. So I can't believe it, like literally two weeks away almost. So Super excited about that. Um, if you can, um, whether you are on Facebook or IG or um, YouTube, let me know where you are joining from. Super excited about um, today's session. It's probably one of the most overlooked sessions that um, as far as the topic um, when it comes to pro cheer auditions, when it comes to making sure that you are the full package. So really excited to be able to go over all of that. So a couple of ground rules are kind of like housekeeping items. If you are joining us in on the Facebook group, I am going to go ahead and type in a link here. You've got to click on that link to give us permission so that we can actually see your name over here in our system. If you're in Facebook, um, that's who you basically need to use that link. If you are um, on YouTube, you're good to go. IG, I kind of see all of you all right here. So if you just, you know, have a question or a comment or want to, you know, kind of reply to anything, that I'm saying or I'm doing as part of our technique challenge. If you just, you know, go ahead and make your comment there, I can actually see who you are. So I do want to make sure that everyone kind of knows what's happening, what's going on. So really quick, this is um, like all of the giveaways. We're kind of, you know, a soft, soft bribe to make you show up for yourself. So um, yesterday we gave away 20% off of our pro cheer choreography uh, tonight. So if you did your homework last night and or showed up live, you have the opportunity to win a free one-on-one -on -one session with any coach of your choice. Wednesday, we're giving away Shakeology. Thursday, those two $1,000 scholarships to the Pro Cheer Playbook program. And then on Friday, it is going to be a $50 gift card. So
Uh, so that's the whole, the giveaways for the entire week, just so you kind of know. Let me show you what we have in store as far as the actual schedule. So with the schedule, we have um, last night, if you missed it, make sure that you go watch the replay. Sadie is going to drop that link um, in the comments for you. We met with Lizzie and we talked about her journey of becoming a professional cheerleader. Before she hopped on, we really talked about dancing and all that you need to know as it relates to um, becoming ready for the dance portion of auditions for any team, really. Tonight, we're going to be talking about presentation, whether it's in person, on paper, or in the photos that you submit. And Kies is going to be joining us. Super excited. Um, about that uh, coming up in just a little bit. She's such a remarkable young woman. So not only has she made a pro team for soccer, but she is part of our elite group as well and is working on, like literally she has two businesses. Um, she has parlayed her experience with being a performer and a dancer into um, entertainment, into the entertainment industry. She is um, a former pageant title holder. She, I mean, God, like literally the list goes on and on. She's an actress. Like it's absolutely amazing. And like I mentioned, she even has her own businesses and as a mom, like as if that's not enough. Right. So just really cannot wait for her to kind of share her journey and her story with you as well. So, so excited to have her on Wednesday. We're um, basically going to go over workout. So a dancer's workout to make sure you guys are ready um, to get on that dance floor and dance, but that you're treating your body the right way and that you're doing the right workouts um, and eating the right foods and all of that stuff to be prepared for that gruesome day of auditions. Um, Jeanette, who is our nutrition and fitness coach, she's going to be joining us on Wednesday. And y'all, she's amazing. She has been on Fox 5 um, DC in the morning. It's like one of the top rated morning shows in the Washington DC area. She's been on that show now um, about three times. She was just on there a, a couple of days ago in November. She was on there in October. They have invited her back in December and January. So she knows what she's talking about. So inspirational, absolutely amazing woman. She's going to join. And then also Luna is going to be with us on Wednesday as well. She is a graduate of our Pro Cheer Playbook program. She's one of our Japanese lovelies that actually worked with us in the program while she was living in Japan. And guys, she's now on the Dallas Cowboys Rhythm and Blue. Yes, I did say that. Dallas Cowboys Rhythm and Blue. So she'll be joining us on Wednesday. Thursday, again, we're talking about giving away some money. So $2,000 worth in scholarships. And we're also going to be going over our formulas for freestyle and choreography. So that's likely, I would say our top questions are about freestyle and how to pick up choreography faster. So we're literally going to be going over all of that on Thursday. And then Friday, it's all about getting pro cheer ready. And we are going to have a former Miami Dolphins uh, cheerleader with us and one of our coaches. She also cheered for the Texans, um, you know, so she's absolutely amazing. And that is Taylor. So, again, so much coming up, so much in store for you guys. And we really just want to make sure that what you do is you come on, you ask questions, you're engaged, but more importantly, that you take action right? More importantly, that you take this time to learn and grow, get information, learn from other people, but then you don't just say, oh, well, that was cool. That was really nice. I learned a lot from Janine and Kies tonight. Hmm. Okay. No, we want you to be like, okay, I learned this, 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 and this, and tomorrow I'm doing this and this. And then on Thursday, I'm going to do this and this. And then, oh, if I get stuck, I know that I can go contact Kies. I can contact Janine and I can get assistance and help. We want you to take action. In order to accomplish something that you've never accomplished before, you have to be willing to do something that you've never done before. OK, in order to literally reach the next level, guys, you have to be willing to do something that you've never done, because if you were already at that level, right, you would have already done the things you needed to do to get to that level. But you're not at that level, which is why you're on with me. And that's OK, because we are literally here to help you get to the next level. But you've got to be willing to take the action. You've got to be willing to put yourself into uncomfortable situations so that you can 
learn and grow, and then eventually be comfortable in those different situations. Okay. So super excited to have you guys on. I know that was kind of a lot of, you know, pre um, explanation and, and uh, kind of background on kind of what we're going to be doing over the next couple of days, but just want to make sure everyone is aware of kind of what is going on and what we have in store for you. So let's see. Um, so I, let me see. Here's oh, Sadie already clicked on the link. Here's the other link. So if you're in Facebook, here's the link that you need in order for us to see your name. If you want to do that, um, someone on Facebook says um, you are the bomb. Thank you. You are the bomb. So that's one thing, guys, like it's so wonderful when women in our community and even men, when you give compliments and when you um, help level someone else up, it, even if it's just by saying thank you, or you are the bomb, or you look great, that type of positive energy is going to be attracted back to you. So the more that you give, guys, the more that you receive. And that is the wonderful thing about life. That's the wonderful thing about the law of attraction. That is the wonderful thing about the universe. When you give, you will receive. What's up, Hot Rob? <laughs> Preach the truth, Miss G. I'm trying. I am so trying. So Rob, quick story about Rob. Um, we went to the University of Richmond together. I was a sophomore. He was a freshman. Was coming in thinking, okay, I think I want to be a cheerleader. And so he threw his very first college stunt with me. I literally jumped up into his hands. And from that point on, he was hooked. And he ended up uh, cheering for, you know, the University of Richmond Spiders for the entire four years of his career there. So thanks, Rob, for being here and supporting. Love you to death. Um, okay, so guys, we're going to go ahead and get started and kind of jump into the content for today. Really excited. Um, today is day two. So what we want you all to do is go ahead and grab your workbook. Again, you're going to be taking tons of notes. There's a lot of information. There's actually two pages in your workbook dedicated to the topic today. Why is that, you might ask? It is because it is so important. This part, again, is one of those areas where we sometimes just overlook it because we just don't realize how important it is. So day two is about your presentation. So how you present yourself, whether it's in person with the coaches and the directors, whether it's on paper through your resume, your application, or also obviously the photos that you submit when you are actually going for, um, you know, your auditions. So it's super important that you come to, um, I guess, put your best foot forward at the very, very beginning of this entire process. And the, one of the first things that they'll see before they even possibly meet you is your application. It is your resume, you know, so it's really, really important that you not underestimate the importance of your presentation and your delivery when it comes to these items. Okay. So kind of let's keep that in mind. So let's get started. If you have any questions, please let me know. Again, we are going to make sure that you have the opportunity to ask questions toward the end. But if there are any that pop up during um, this part where I actually am going over the two pages in the workbook, please let me know. So let's talk about first impressions. So first impressions, your application, your resume, and your photos are sometimes the first things that judges see, okay? The first things that judges see. So you really want to make a great first impression, right? You really want to have an amazing first impression through using that application, your resume, and your photos, okay? So please make sure that you not forget this part because, again, sometimes this is the first thing that they're going to actually see. So a pro tip, we want you to actually create your resume in Canva. So create your resume in Canva, okay? So those are the first kind of blanks there. Create your resume in Canva and get your photos professionally taken if at all possible. Those photos are so important. Do not sleep on the photo. So what happens is you will literally end up having to, let's say, okay, let me put it to you this way. So let's say you're at auditions and 
the first round is over and they're deliberating, trying to figure out what's going to happen for round two. And they, what they do is they go into their deliberation room and they have a yes pal, a maybe pal, and a no pal. Okay. And because they're not going to remember who number 17 was, they pull out your application and they pull out that photo. All right. And that is what they're looking at to help them decide which pile you're going to be in. Is it going to be the yes, the no, or the maybe? So again, that photo is so important. It really is important. And you really want to make sure that you utilize your photo, like I said before, your application and your resume so that you can stand out and make that great first impression. Okay, so create your uh, resume in Canva and then get your photos professionally taken. Do you have to? Do you have to, you know, get them professionally taken? No, you don't. Do we recommend it? Most definitely we do. OK, but if you're tight on funds, if you're tight on money and you can't get it professionally done, I don't want you all to not audition because you think that they have to be professionally done. It's just a preference of ours. We actually have a photo shoot twice, um, three times a year to make sure that we give that opportunity to um, our clients to have their pictures professionally taken. OK, so next up, what should you include in your resume? So there's going to be a lot here that kind of shows up on on the screen. But here are the things that you want to include um, in your actual resume. Obviously, your name and your contact information. OK, so your name and your contact information, your work experience. So just because this is technically a dance resume and a cheer resume, it doesn't mean that your professional work experience isn't important because it is. And they do take it into consideration. They really do. So your name, your contact information, your work experience, your dance experience, obviously, and that is includes cheer. So dance and cheer experience that you have, community service. So what are you out there doing from a charity standpoint? So any community service, any charity work that you do, any volunteer work, any awards, any accomplishments, okay? All of that we want you to include in your resume, okay? So name and contact information, your work experience, your dance experience, and then all of that community involvement, community service, charity work, volunteer work, awards, accomplishments, and then if possible, that optional piece would be your headshot. Okay, so the optional piece there would be your headshot. So those are all of the things that we want you to include in your resume. All right. Super, super important. And so with the I kind of wanted to go back to the work experience and kind of put it in perspective in this sense. Um, are they going to, you know, not take you because you don't have like the most amazing job? No. If they love you, if you're well rounded, um, you know, they're not going to be like, oh, well, she's just a whatever, whatever. We don't want her on our team. No. But where it could come in handy is let's say all things are equal between you and another candidate. All things are equal. But let's say you're a lawyer or a teacher and the other person doesn't have a job, okay? They more than likely will take you because of your work experience, okay? So also just really be mindful of that, um, that it is important, like that what you do professionally. Um, another thing too, if you have a job that's very demanding and might prevent you from being able to show up the way that they want you to show up um, on the team, that could hurt you as well. So really, you know, be mindful of all elements of your resume, but your work experience is important, okay? All right, I'm going to check to see if there are any questions, but so far I think we're good to go. All right, so pro tip, it's always best to take a headshot and a full body picture. Teams ask for different things, so it's good to have both. So if you do decide to go ahead and have that, get on that photo shoot and take the time to um, pay for someone to get your photos professionally taken, we really recommend that you do a headshot and full body pictures so that they can see both sides of you, right? Your body, your positioning, all of that is really important. So you do want to go ahead and take a full body image. We normally recommend in a swimsuit or audition attire or workout attire where they can actually see your body and all of that. And then obviously a headshot. And when you sign up, for example, one of our programs, we literally give you um, a checklist of all of the things that we recommend that you um, make sure that you pack and that you consider and that you take with you. OK, so if you have any questions, um, let me know. Um, obviously, I am here to assist and help. But that's the long and short of that first, um, you know, 
uh, sheet within day two. So really quick, want to show you um, this. So this is um, Sadie's resume. This is her before. And so just take a look at the before here because then I'm going to show you the after. So this is the before kind of utilizing word um, and very professional, it looks good, but then I want you to compare it to this one here, okay? So this one is actually from Canva, right? And just look at the difference in just how it stands out. It has a little bit more life to it. Let's go to the second page of each of these, right? It just it looks to me even more professional, more polished, and really paints the picture of who she is in a very different light. And so this is why we recommend that you go ahead and utilize Canva because it really is um, a more artistic way to present who you are on paper. And it's going to stand out compared to other resumes that they're looking at, because most resumes are going to be more like the one on the left, not the one on the right. OK, so it really is recommended, again, that you utilize Canva or some other, you know, graphics type tool so that you can create a resume like this that really does stand out. So, you know, kudos to Sadie for making the updates. It's one of our trainings in the ProChair Playbook program where we actually give you samples of different resumes and make recommendations and all of that and um, walk you through what needs to be included. And you can see here dance experience and work experience. She has a summary. So really, really professional and it looks really, you know, top notch. Okay, guys, so we're going to go ahead and move on because like I and I know that I'm kind of going through this a little fast, but again, really want to make sure that we have enough time to bring Kies on and pick her brain and talk to her as well. So I am going to actually turn this around. So hopefully you guys can see a little bit of what we have here um, on. Sorry, guys that are on YouTube. Okay, there we go. So hopefully they can see what we're kind of doing as well. Okay. So what we want you to do as a reminder is go to the end of the workbook and complete your total technique score. And it's basically going to ask you questions to see how well you are doing as it relates to your um, resume and some of the elements that you just learned here um, for presentation. OK. All right. So let's move on now to the next part. So this is crafting your intro speech. Another very underrated item, <laughs> almost every single audition that I have been to, you have to craft and basically introduce yourself to the judges. It's one of the first things that you do. So each team's requirements may be a little different as far as the length, what they want you to include, but be prepared at a minimum to share these things. First of all, your name. You should nail this. You've had your name since you were born. You should nail this one. This one should not be a problem whatsoever. You also want to maybe include where you are from. So state your name, where you are from, and then your education or your occupation. So if you're just graduating from college, you maybe want to mention that. If you're in the workforce, you could also mention that. OK, then what we recommend is that you then give them some sort of fun fact or something interesting about yourself that will help you stand apart from everyone else. Something that really helps you be remembered by the judges. But at a minimum, the things that you definitely want to include your name, where you are from and your education and or your occupation. Now, the questions that you want to be prepared to answer during the interview process, super, super important, guys. And I'm actually going to get Kies to kind of go through some of her responses that she's used in the past when she has been um, uh, through the audition process. So the first question you want to be able to answer without a doubt is why do you want to be a part of this team? And if you were a part of our session last night, Lizzie explained that when she auditioned for Miami, she started to feel as though her answers were kind of all of the same for each of the teams that she was auditioning for. And she really had to get real with herself and say, why do I want to be a part of the Miami Dolphins cheerleaders and personalize it to that team? Another question that comes up a lot, 
What would make you a good candidate for this team? So why should I pick you? Why should I select you out of the other hundreds of people that are auditioning for this exact same spot? Why you? What makes you different? What makes you a good candidate? And then what can you bring to this team? So that kind of corresponds with that second question. What can you bring to this team? OK, so at a minimum, be prepared to answer all three of those questions. Pro tip, your intro speech should sound genuine and conversational. Right. So, again, that's one thing that Lizzie made a point of saying was that she kind of felt like she was just repeating herself, saying kind of the same thing over and over again at different auditions. And you don't want it to sound rehearsed. You don't want it to sound as if you've been practicing it and it's not coming from the heart. So you want your intro speech to sound genuine and conversation, conversational. And you want to share things that no one else will say in order to help you stand out and be remembered, okay? Super, super important that you figure out a way to introduce yourself that makes you unique, that makes you different, that makes you really feel as though you are um, definitely the person that should be selected out of all of the other candidates, okay? So here is a question from Anna. How can you find out what the time commitment is for each team? Is it different for each one? Yes, it can be. Um, for the most part, for you know NFL teams, you're going to have two practices a week. It's going to be two to three hours um, each you know, evening for practice, and then games are pretty much all day, right? But then a lot of teams spend more time, for example, in promotional appearances, charity events than others. So it is going to vary, but the teams are very open about that up front because they don't want you to take a spot on their team and then not be able to commit to that time commitment. So they will make sure that you know that ahead of time. Um, and just so you know, guys, um, we can like literally – get a lot of these answers for you, right? We have lovelies and gents that are on teams all across the United States. Let me just share this with you guys really quick. So this is a map of basically all of the teams that we've helped place um, ladies and gentlemen on. 19 different NFL teams and 14 different NBA teams. So nine times out of 10, if it's an NFL or an NBA team and you have a question about the requirements or something about that team, nine times out of 10, we have someone that we can reach out to to find out that answer. And nine times out of 10, it will be one of our lovelies. And so just take a look at, for example, our results and kind of just, you know, everything that other people are saying about us that have worked with us. 100% of our clients say their knowledge, style, and glamour have improved after working with us. 98% would recommend us to their friends. 98% satisfaction rating, which is kind of unheard of. And a 74% success rate of our graduates from our Pro Cheer Playbook program making teams. We work with ladies internationally from Japan. All of these women have made pro teams, NFL and NBA teams. Um, also, Look at all of these amazing women as they kind of slowly pop up on the screen here. Uh, but this is just for this year, just to kind of keep it in perspective. These are just our clients this season that made a team this season, that are on teams this season. This doesn't include all of the amazing women and men that we've worked with, um, you know, in prior years that made teams just this season. It like really does give me chills, literally gives me chills looking at this collage and kind of looking at all of the people that we've been able to help. It's super, super, super exciting. And we want to be able to do this, obviously, for you. We want to be able to help you go pro and help you in just a deeper way. And as a reminder, yes, most indeed, this can and should be you. So any questions that you have, if for some reason we're not able to, as coaches, uh, to be able to answer those, we definitely have resources um, and people across you know, the United States that will be able to help you um, as well and get those questions answered. So um, let's go ahead and kind of dive into the next component of um, tonight, because uh, I want to just jump right in and kind of get started. So as I mentioned, um, Kies is is with us and we're going to have her on to really just help 
explain to you from her perspective, her background on how she kind of took a dream that she had about becoming a professional cheerleader and truly turned it into reality. And now, you know, is living the best life, right? Still going for her goals, still going for her dreams, still working on improvement, but utilizing the things that she has learned in the Pro Cheer Playbook program to really parlay and venture into other avenues and different, you know, other things, um, you know, to be successful in other areas and really just deciding that, you know, she is worth it and putting herself and putting what she wants um, at the forefront of all of the things, which is really, really important, guys, is to really give yourself the time to, you know, self-care. Give yourself the time to accomplish your goals. Give yourself the time to work on the things that you know you need to work on in order to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. And that is half of the battle. It's half of the battle to just put yourself first and do all of the things. So with that being said, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So let's go ahead and get Kies on here. Hello, gorgeous. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you doing this evening? Doing good, doing good. <laughs> I'm excited oh. to be here. <laughs> yeah, so good to see you. So normally I see you almost every single Wednesday, um, but last Wednesday I was at FedEx Field hosting um, a huge event for Bank of America for the commanders. And so we didn't have our elite call. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I kind of miss you. I hadn't seen you in like almost two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I know it feels like forever. <laughs> like forever. I know. I but know. Hopefully, we can figure it out that uh, Lee call because I know that you said for this week we'll try to figure it out this weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, for those that, that don't know, so basically, guys, when you graduate from our Pro Cheer Playbook program, successfully graduate, then you are invited into our Elite program, which is our Level Two program. And yes, we still help you with Pro Cheer, but you're able to repeat any Pro Cheer Playbook program that you want for free when you join Elite. But in Elite, we really focus on leveling you up in other areas of your life. So really focusing on goal, um, you know, goal setting and your professional life. And we talk about manifestation, the law of attraction, networking, you know, building your own business, like all of the things we talk about in Elite. So I'm able to, you know, work with Kies and, um, you know, some of our other graduates of the PCP in a much deeper way every single week. And it's such a delight. We're such a, you know, small group of amazing women. Um, and I feel like I just, they're, they're my besties. So <laughs> super excited to have you on. So what I would love for you to do, um, cause I feel like my introduction really didn't do you any justice because you <laughs> are just so accomplished in all of the things that you're doing. Um, and you're juggling a lot of balls, you're wearing a lot of hats. Um, uh, but if you could first kind of just talk about your kind of pro cheer journey. So kind of where you started, you know, where that dream came from, kind of how you ventured into where you are now, you know, getting, finding, you know, sideline prep, PCP, all of that. So just your pro cheer journey. And then the second part of that is just sharing what you're up to now, like all of the things. <laughs> Okay. So, um, well, hello. Uh, so my name is Kia Sims. I uh, pretty much my whole pro tour journey started in 2009. I decided to go out for the Miami Dolphins cheerleaders when I was uh, living like in Miami. Um, and I didn't make it. <laughs> I um, actually just decided on a whim. I did go to their prep classes or whatnot, but to be quite honest, I wasn't ready either. I like knowing what I know now, how I went there then, total night and day. But, you know, I took a chance um, and I went out for it. And then I um, went out for the Miami Heat um, right after that because it's like a, you kind of get the adrenaline. Once you do one audition one year, you're like, I'm determined to keep going until I make it. So, um, didn't make that. <laughs> um, and then I went out for the Florida Panthers and I made it all the way to finals for that. Uh, they did not pick me in the end, but that was as far as I got on my first year auditioning. I ended up taking a back seat, uh, with pro or pro Cheer ended up taking a back seat, um, because even though I didn't make the Florida Panthers, I had actually ended up making, um, another entertainment, uh, job <laughs> which is the laundry football league i ended up making that which was a televised um 
uh, or, or kind of organization where it's just like, you know, models and doing, a, it was, it was kind of like a, it was fun, <laughs> but it wasn't anything that was like, I was trying to make a career out of. So I essentially, um, but that made me have to take a, a, a backseat with the uh, pro cheer, but I, that lasted for like a year, but then I realized that I don't really want to do this again. Um, it was fun for the year I did it. So let me get back to dance um, and do what I was really passionate about. And um, it took me, I started working as a local performer doing um, entertainment such as uh, dance choreography and go go jobs uh, all around South Florida. And I did that for years. And I decided to try out again for the Miami Dolphins in 2018. Didn't make it. <laughs> I definitely was a little bit more polished than before, but um, I did not have the technique down. Um, and for freestyle, I don't really usually have a problem with freestyle. However, you have to kind of incorporate the team's way of dancing in your freestyle. And I didn't know that. So um, didn't make it um, past the first round. And eventually i you know started talking to my boyfriend about how i was wanting to like really you know get into pro cheer and or whatnot and he actually had a friend who um also was into the pro cheer world and she mentioned sideline prep and how um janine uh helps girls get into the pro cheer world so i started doing my research and i kind of go stalker mode um, whenever I'm <laughs> researching. Um, so I went stalker mode and I eventually did uh, reach out uh, to Janine and uh, talk to her in regards to joining the program. And I was able to join the summer 2020 program, but not before I auditioned again, because <laughs> before I officially joined, I had auditioned. That was around the time that I actually was trying to also audition for the uh, first lady of football when they were still like cheerleading. Um, and also audition for the Dallas Cowboys, all virtual because 2020, everything was virtual at that point. And so, you know, um, I didn't make either of those <laughs> and then on into sideline prep, uh, you know, program that I went because obviously I was doing something wrong. Um, and that's where I learned what I was doing wrong. I, I literally, um, had to go back to, you know, square one and, 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 uh, I asked a lot of questions. I was, practically on every call that I could that I could uh, find for whatever they were offering at the time during the program. Like I was literally on it um, because I was determined to um, make, a make a team. Like I'm like, I'm tired of trying out and not making it. I I'm obviously need help. I'm not doing something right. So let me test this out. And I'm so happy I did because I learned what I was doing wrong. And by that fall, I made my first ever professional cheerleading team, which was the Baltimore Blast. Yay! <laughs> so, and I had such a such a blast. It was fun <laughs> on uh, with that team. You know, they definitely tested my limits in regards to technique because I am not a strong technical dancer. It's something that I have been working on uh, since 2020, and I've gotten a lot better. Um, but being a part of that team also helped me grow to become better. So it, it I, I definitely would recommend, you know, if you are in the Baltimore area to give that team a try because they they really did help me up my up my skill level and choreography as well. Like I literally they push you. They really push you to bring out more than what you think you even had. And for that, like, you know, it, it was great. And and I still, even being a part of the team, I still was on everything just about that I could that I could get on for Janine and sideline prep. Like I literally <laughs> like I told Janine she can't get rid of me and we have to figure something out. So <laughs> so I love you too. <laughs> so um <clears throat> So what she she ended up telling us that she was going to do an elite program and I was like, I'm in. So that's why I've been with her for this long, because I refuse to leave. Um, honestly, she's helped me level up my life in in more than just pro cheer in business as well. Like I've you know, I can't I can't speak enough about the elite program. I would definitely you know, I know you have to go through the pro cheer uh, playbook program first, but 
you know, once you graduate that elite program, if you're looking to level up in every aspect of your life, aside from pro cheer as well, because we also still work on pro cheer things, but you know, that elite program, top notch. Um, so yeah, it was, it's been a journey. Um, I did, I ended up injuring myself the next year when it came time for, um, tryouts again for the Baltimore blast. Cause you know, you all, everybody has to try out again. And I ended up injuring myself and having to be unfortunately taken out of the running for being a part of the team the following year. Um, and, but I still keep in touch with the coach or whatnot. And, and it's all, it's all love. Uh, I didn't audition this year only because of the fact that, you know, I, I have so much going on in South Florida with traveling and military. And it just was, it, it wouldn't be fair for me to be a part of a team and not being able to give everything uh, to it. So I decided to, to hold out uh, for this year, but I do plan on auditioning again uh, this coming year, because like I said, I, you know, the team was great and I learned so much and, you know, I love them for everything that they helped me become as a performer because it definitely amped up my uh, my skill level. And I would recommend it for everybody. Oh, wonderful. That was, so, that was so amazing. So you mentioned something. I can't even believe that I forgot to mention it, but your military ties. So talk a little bit about that. And <laughs> And I do know that that, you know, that was a concern with Liz, the coach, because of the military commitment, which you can't let down the military, right? You have to fulfill those obligations, but share a little bit like what you're doing with the reserves and all of that. So I'm a part of the Airmen and Family Readiness um, Unit right now, which I'm, I'm on a financial financial analyst, <laughs> budget analyst for the Air Force, but I'm currently on a special duty tour with the Airmen and Family Readiness in which what we do is we pretty much try to, we're kind of like the morale boosters for the Air Force, as well as we make sure that their families are taken care of when the members are away uh, for deployments and TDYs. Uh, we also, you know, we also deal with uh, the survivor, surviving families of members who are no longer with us. And we just try to put on events uh, for the base and their and their family members just to help the morale. Because, you know, in all honesty, when, when they're over there, you know, they want to know that their families are being taken care of. That's one less thing that they have to, to stress about. It's already stressful enough. The last thing we want them to think about is, you know, you know, my, is my, child in a good school is my wife being you know taken care of or do i need to like you, you know we want we want to be that to be able to provide them that kind of uh peace knowing that we got it over here take care of the business over there yep. wonderful so obviously thank you for your service um thank it's you for your support definitely appreciate it you know with me being um, you know, former first lady of football for the NFL, like that was one of the things that I loved the most about my job as a dancer was being able to go overseas and perform for troops, you know, our men and women in the military. And, you know, it takes a very strong person to give a part of their lives in that way. So really do appreciate you. Um, it's just, again, guys, it's just another example of why she's so amazing. Now, I do want to get into the pageant side of your accomplishments, because mm -hmm. a lot of people sleep on the fact that the skills that you have in the pageantry world easily transfer over to pro cheer. Now, of course, with pro cheer, you do have to have that added element of, you know, the dance, the technique and all of that. But we have seen some of our most successful PCP graduates come from the pageant world world because they're so polished in how they present themselves, their interview skills, how they walk, how they talk, like all of that. Like we don't have to worry about that nutrition, fitness, all that stuff. We normally just don't have to worry about because you kind of learn that in the pageant space. So talk a little bit about your accomplishments there and then how you think that has helped you with pro cheer. Yes, for sure. So, um, pretty much in the pageant world, uh, you know, I've, I started doing that. Oh my gosh. I did. I divvied and dabbed in that one as well throughout my time. I, my first uh, pageant try, <laughs> well, I was 15 and I did double Dutch as a talent. I did not know what I was doing <laughs> in the 
pageant world, but it was something that I wanted to do for fun. Um, I then was appointed um, in 2009 uh, as uh, Mrs. Miami Beach Tropics. And that, you know, for that one, I to be appointed, I had to compete by writing, you know, a statement, a letter, of, well, not a letter, but um, an actual like essay of why I would make a good, you know, title holder. Um, my first official as a as an adult um, pageant was in 2018. And at this point, I had already, I would say, graduated from the Miss category and was in the Miss category. Um, so I, um, I did, uh, went out for Ms. Art De Ms. Woman Art Deco, and that's a local pageant in Miami, South Beach. Um, the one that you're looking at now is Elite Miss Earth USA. So that will actually, I, I credit Miss Woman Art Deco to helping me prepare for the Elite Miss Earth um, United States. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't send them any pictures of the Miss, Miss Art Deco one. But basically, that was the first pageant that I won. Um, and from there, I went on to uh, uh, pretty much do the pat. They put me on to the pageant for a state pageant for Elite Miss Earth Florida. I went out for that um, and I lost. I got first runner up, <laughs> but due to, I, and it was, it was, I was fortunate enough to have the national director of the Miss Earth USA system there, um, uh, the assistant national director. And she was there and she actually, um, she actually was the one that said, you know what, like, are you interested in competing at nationals? Because I guess rumor has it that she asked the judges if they made a mistake. <laughs> so she came backstage and asked me if I was interested in competing at the national pageant still, because she thinks she can get me an at-large title to compete. Um, I guess, you know, she felt like I could, that I could do it. So I was like, yeah, sure. I definitely want to compete. Um, <laughs> you know, at the time I was thinking, you know, the girl that I had lost to, I was like, you know, I was like, I just want to see how I would place against her at a national pageant with judges that don't know us. <laughs> but by the time that I got to the national pageant, I had realized that it was no longer about her. It was about, have I become a better person like throughout this journey? Like, have I improved from my, like how you know, am I, have I improved from that person that I was yesterday? So no longer did I even care where I placed, if I placed at all, honestly, I would have been happy to have placed in top 12 because it was my first national pageant ever. And so I went there and I let go of all the thoughts of trying to beat her and just thought about, you know what, I'm, I've already done all the work I needed to do. I'd done my community service. I've been doing my community service for months upon months. I've, you know, my resume is as best as I can get it. Like everything that I turned in was the best that I could do. Like I had to personally, the way that I felt about it is that if I'm happy with it, then, and that's the best that I could give them, then, then that's good. That's good enough for me. So I went in there and, you know, a former Miss Earth, or I guess she's, yeah, she's Miss Earth uh, Air 2015 was there. And she said something to us that stuck with me um, throughout that pageant. And it was basically, she said, you know, the winner of your categories has already been written by, you know, it's already, God already knows who it is. So at this point, all you can do is have fun. And I took that to heart and I just, you know, had fun with it. And I ended up winning, like literally every, every event that we were at, I made sure to be there, like to not be thinking about anything else, but to be there and to, and to, you know, talk to everyone that I, that I came across, including the staff. Like I didn't shy away from them. Other girls shied away from them. I talked to them. And also I was making sure that the minute that I stepped, the minute that I actually stepped off the plane to, to go to the national pageant, I went into the airport bathroom, changed out of my on the plane scrubs because you know I like to travel comfortable, so <laughs> I'm not going to be on a plane in a dress. But I went into the airport bathroom and changed into my reg because at the pageant you need to be on the minute you step out of the car. So I went into the bathroom and changed into my pageant registration dress and put on my makeup, did my hair. I promise you, every woman that was walking in the airport bathroom that day was like, "What is she doing?" Because I was in the bathroom, really like look making it look like a dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> and 
I, um, you know, went to the, went to the, uh, to the hotel. And from that point on, it was, it was competition mode. It was like, you know, have fun, but also no, like be on your P's and Q's because you never know who the judge and the judges were among us. They, the staff, some of the staff or who you thought were the staff were actually the judges in secret. I mean, of course we also had other judges, but they wanted to see how, how the girls would act when they don't think they're being judged. And I was already on my P's and Q's about that <laughs> because I was like, you know, you just never know. And I'm happy that I was like that because when it came time for an interview and I saw some of those same faces in my interview room or when it came time to uh, for public speech and I saw those same faces in my public speech, I'm like, okay, I'm happy that I was not acting a fool. Um, but yeah, I, I just had fun. I helped where I could help, uh, you know, as far as the other girls. And, uh, you know, I just, I just, honestly, it, it's like, when, it's like when you are so prepared and I felt so prepared, it's like, then all you can do is enjoy the process and however it ends up, it ends up. But I, I enjoyed the process, the entire process, especially the on stage, because as a performer, I'm like, if I can dance on a stage in front of thousands of people, I can sure enough walk on a stage in front of a couple hundred. <laughs> So, you know, um, definitely the audience loved that, the stage portion, I will say, because I was a little bit theatrical, <laughs> but, but in the end, it, it, it definitely did uh, play in my favor. And, and yeah, now you see the total, like, you know, the pictures of the, of the crowning shots and such. And uh, it just was, it, it was, it was so surreal. I like, I will forever remember that day. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I bet. And y'all, it's like just a, there's so many gold nuggets that she's dropping, you know, with her experience with the pageant space, which is crazy. Because I'm like, oh, my God, we say we say that same thing in the PCP, which I know because you've been through it. Um, but some writer downers there really just, you know, that your path is already written. Right. And you said it like God has already determined the universe, the spirits, whatever it is that you believe in, has already determined the outcome of that situation. So why not just go into that situation and just have fun and be yourself and enjoy the process? And because you did that, you probably showed up in a very different way with very different energy. And obviously. The judges yeah. felt that. energy, Right. Yes. <laughs> For sure. It was like you could tell even during the interview portion, it was like when when uh, they give you three minutes and uh, at the end of my three minutes, the judges were like, oh, <laughs> they still wanted to ask more questions. <laughs> so that's what you want. You don't even want it to feel like an interview. You want it to feel like a conversation because that's how much fun you're having. The other thing that you mentioned that I know that we always are stressing to our lovelies is, you know, from the moment that you get out of your car on audition day. Be nice to everyone. Everyone is your best friend. The person opening the door, the person that you think is admin at the registration table, like because you never know who they are. And case in point with your situation in the pageant space, the exact same thing. Some of those people that were opening the door ended yeah. up being one of the judges <laughs> or something like that. So another yeah. thing that's very transferable as well. Yes, they like, you know, it was it was uh, especially telling when uh, we had any we were coming back from a community service museum day and they gave us lunch. And, you know, Miss Earth is about conservation, sustainability, like, you know, and uh, like one of the staff was noticing that the girls were not like she was noticing who was really into that and not into that based on how they were disposing away of their lunch trays and what they were doing with everything. So, and she made a comment about it. And I was just like, see, <laughs> I'm like, I know it. I know they have to be a judge. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you you know, cause sometimes they want, they, they want to be among you because they really want to see how you really are. And they, they don't, you know, it, it's, so I think, I think that's actually a good thing too, because it's mm -hmm. like, you know, you, you can, you can probably fool somebody for three minutes, but if they're among you for a couple of days, they really can see how you are.
Most definitely. And, you know, case in point, guys, right or down, or you have to be honest and you have to be genuine, right? So, you know, there have been situations where people have, you know, stretched the truth a little bit on their resume and, you know, say that they speak a, a certain language. And then one of the judges speaks that language and tries to talk to them, you know, during the interview process. And you realize, oh, she's really not fluent. She can literally say, hello, how are you? My name is like, that's <laughs> it. You know, so being mindful of that, the example that you gave on just like if you truly are about the environment, you're going to be mindful of recycling and doing all of these things after you eat and making sure that you're putting things in the right, you know, so you really do want to be truthful because when they start to ask the questions and when they look at you, they will be able to figure out all of this. And I don't know if you're able to see the comments or I've been trying to put them up, but I want you to go back into this replay and just watch them because you're just getting so many amazing comments. Because again, guys, I told you she's amazing. So amazing. Your personality is infectious, right? And this is what your energy, guys, I want y'all to just notice her energy, right? Notice how she's showing up for you all. Notice how she's making you feel. And now imagine if you're a judge, how are you feeling talking to Kies, right? And so <laughs> this is what you, every single day, you want to strive, we said it yesterday, to be 1% better than you were the day before. And that includes your energy and how you're showing up and how you're making other people feel by you being around. It does matter and it does count. Um, even if Kies has had a hard day, when she gets on our elite calls or she's actually in the VIP portion of elite, so we have some one-on-ones as well, she's always laughing. I can hear her smiling on the other side of the line when we're on phone calls together. <laughs> and she always brings that positivity no matter what. So the question for you here is how are you able to do that? Because I know you have bad days. You know, we talk about it on Elite. In order for there to be ups, there have to be downs. In order for there to be sunshine, there has to be rain. So how are you able to always just show up with that smile on your face? You know, I... I'm definitely one of those people that when I am sad, you can, like, I wear my heart on my sleeve, but at the same time, I have like this, there's this, there's this thought in me all the time that, you know what, no matter how bad the situation is, it, this is not permanent. Things will get better. Uh, you know, this will, this too shall pass. So I just tend to think of, I'll take a, I'll give myself a minute. I'll usually give myself, you know, five minutes. If, if it's a really bad day, five minutes to cry. <laughs> 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 and then, and then I will start to think of, okay, what should I do next? Um, if it's a situation I need to overcome, what are some options that I can um, think about to overcome so that I can take those next steps to, to get past this because I can't, I can't stay in this, in this vibe. I have to, you know, I, you know, I allow myself to some time to, you know, get out the emotion, but at the same time, I also in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, well cry, but now what's next? <laughs> like we got to think about what's next. And, you know, usually I also like to, you know, even on the bad days, if, if, if we happen to have a call on the day where I'm like going through a little bit of stuff, I usually like to try to feed off of the energy that I'm listening to from the other girls. Like, and you know, it's, it's a lot of helpful information that's being given there. And, and, you know, I'm sorry y'all, but Janine be dropping a lot of nuggets in those groups with the elite. Like she, be, like, it's like sometimes some of the, some of the, some of the um classes that we're doing there, it's just like, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like she's read my mind somewhere because like, she'll say some things that I'm just like, ah, that's, that's perfect. I didn't even that's think it. about that. I, and I can apply it to whatever it is that I'm going through. But so it definitely, it's definitely helpful. And I will, I will preach to the end of the earth about the elite program. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, I, I am, I am one to say that, you know, if you're having an issue, you know, take your, take your time, take your, take your five minutes. You know, I used to go in the bathroom and cry because I didn't want anybody to know, <laughs> like, but then I'll get myself together, put a little, I drops in, clear out the water, and then, hi, <laughs> you know, and, and, and keep it pushing. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And, you know, that's one thing that we talked about in Elite. Um, so there's a great book. It's called Miracle Equation by Hal Elrod. It's in our Amazon store if you want to um, check it out. Uh, but it basically talks about how he, when something would happen, 
he would give himself the five minutes that Kies just mentioned, five minutes to be upset, be, be up in your feelings, cry, yell, scream, stomp, whatever it is that you need to do. But then after that five minutes, realize that it's in the past and you can't change it. You literally cannot change what has happened. It happened. It's over. It's done with. And like Kie said, now what? So now what am I going to do to course correct, to learn from this opportunity, to turn this negative situation into something positive? But yes, allow yourself that grief. But then it's time to move on. It's time to take that one step and then the next step and then the next step and then the next step. And it's interesting because when you're having a bad day, when you have your tribe, like our elite group, and you are around that tribe, all of a sudden, that bad day isn't that bad anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Another thing, when you decide that you're no longer going to be upset, depressed, mad, angry, whatever it is, and you decide to be a key ace and put that smile on your face and to, you know, walk into that difficult situation with your thinking cap on, how can I make this better? When you decide to change your perspective and how you're looking at something, then how you're looking at what you're looking at will change, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all in how you approach life. It's all in how you take that negative and help to turn that negative into something that will benefit you. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know that I've ever actually said to you that I admire you always smiling because I hear it. I see it. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But that's the way we all strive to show up. I mean, mm -hmm. I know sometimes on our VIP calls, I'm like, yes, Slow down, <laughs> slow down, take a deep breath. <laughs> like, hold on, I got to catch up. Wait a second. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll be going. <laughs> oh, 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 wait, slow down. I gotta, I gotta come up. But that type of energy is, it is infectious, right? And it really does. And it's what judges notice. It's what directors notice. It's what coaches notice. Um, You know, it's, Everyone notices a positive person, guys. So when you can figure out how to be that person, try to be that person every single day. Um, so just a couple of comments that are coming up. I don't know if you saw the ones from Malika. So shout out to her, one of our PCP sisters. She says, love you, sister. And then you look so inspiring, which we think uh, Malika's inspiring too. She's been through it and she's you know still hanging in there, going strong. Mm -hmm. Sadie says, this too shall pass. Yes, ma'am, always. And it mm -hmm. will, guys. Guys, it will. Like if you think about the worst thing that's ever happened in your life, was it horrible? Was it bad? Was it sad? But don't you feel better today, right? right. Don't you feel better today compared to that? Um, uh, so true, inspiring, awesome, awesome. And then Sadie did put the link for our Amazon store. If you want to check out that book, definitely a great, great read. And that was The Miracle Equation by um, Hal Elrod. So what I would love to do now, I know it's at the top of the hour. I can't believe the 30 <laughs> minutes went by so fast. It's crazy. Um, so what I would like to do, though, is kind of get back to the content around the presentation. And we really talked about, you know, the importance of making sure that people bring their A game with their intro speech and and really nailing that portion of the entire process. So I know that you've been through a couple of auditions and we've helped you with that intro speech and everything, but I would love it if you wouldn't mind just sharing um, <laughs> one of your intro speeches. So if you were in front of the judges and someone said, okay, Kies, <laughs> number one, because you are number one, number <laughs> one, um, please introduce yourself. Okay. Hello there. My name is Kia Sims from Miami, Florida, in which I am the 2018 Elite Miss Earth USA national title holder. I'm a proud graduate of Florida International University with a degree in both economics and international relations. Currently, I work as a financial readiness NCO for the United States Air Force Reserve, which enables me to educate the military members on the importance of managing their finances strategically. And because of my support and dedication for all the branches of our U.S. military, I've been drawn to and highly respect. Um, at that time, it was like the first lady of the football. So <laughs> <laughs> the Washington Commander Entertainment Team because of their dedication, support and love for our military men and women as well, uh, which has been evident in their countless previous military tours. One thing most people don't know about me, though, is that I am an underwater performing mermaid at the Be Ocean Hotel in Fort Lauderdale. Oh my God, how amazing that was. So at this point as a judge, I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> she just dropped so much information. And what's wonderful about like her intro speech is there's a lot of information in there that is very unique. 
how many underwater mermaids have you ever met? <laughs> one, her, that's it. Now y'all can all say that y'all have met one. But outside of that, I had never, I never even knew that that was a thing. And she sent me photos and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. What an awesome job, right? She talks about the military. So even though she kind of saved the mermaid thing as her fun fact toward the end, you know, what she's doing with the military makes her unique. Her title holder, like being a title holder, that makes her unique, right? <laughs> but she started it off basically name, where she is, you know, physically located, kind of her occupation, and then kind of the fun fact, right? So a very simple template and formula that you can utilize guys for any of your intro speeches. That was absolutely amazing. <laughs> so you. what about the question of, and we can use first ladies of football. Obviously that team is near and dear to my heart. Once <laughs> a Redskins cheerleader, always a Redskins cheerleader. Um, yeah. So if you want to kind of just use that team or whatever team you want is fine. But um, why do you want to be a part of this team? Well, I believe I would actually make a great addition uh, to the team because I'm a crowd motivator. I always want to hype up a crowd and get a smile on their faces. I love to level up my performance every single time. Uh, there will not be a time that I do not do a performance. <laughs> that is not better than the last performance that I just did. <laughs> so that is one of the reasons why I think I uh, would love to be a part of this team. I would make a great addition on this team as well. Wonderful. See, guys, it's very conversational. It doesn't sound rehearsed. It doesn't sound over practice. It's thought, you know, you're you thought out and it's organized, but it's not rehearsed. And there is a difference like being a judge and kind of sitting on the other side. Um, you can tell when people have something memorized, because then when they mess a line up or a word up, it messes them up and it just sounds very rehearsed. Right. And so it's super important, guys, that you remember that any answer is going to be a good answer as long as it's genuine and it's coming from your heart. So as long as you've kind of practiced it and kind of, you know, you're not going in there, you know, completely cold, you'll be fine. But this is something that you have to practice. Now, with you coming from the pageant world, having gone through, I'm sure, pageant, you know, coaching and training, getting the coaching and training that you've gotten from us on the interview process, what are some tips that maybe you could share with um, those that are listening and viewing on just how to nail the interview portion of an audition. Okay, uh, so um, I would say before even going into the interview, um, like, cause they give the judges the paperwork on you uh, before they see you. Um, and um, it's the same with pro cheer, like they're look usually like looking at your paperwork um, before they even before you even come up and greet them. So uh, in the pageant world, we have a saying that you can already pick out the winner from the paperwork. Um, and basically this is because you can usually tell the girl that is likely to win based on the paper. Um, and, and if she is very, because usually if she's very impressive on paper, all she needs to do at that point is live up to what's being seen on paper when interviewing. Um, as long as her appearance and poise are, are on point, um, and she's able to perform the stage performance. It's a solid performance and she, it's a it's a win win. Uh, she doesn't have to perform perfectly on the stage performance usually. And she doesn't need to be the next Gigi Hadid <laughs> in looks, <laughs> but <laughs> she must be she must look presentable and be able to hold her own on both on and off stage. So uh, because we're already impressed by the paperwork and if you're able to tie that in with your interview, then perfect. Um, so I would definitely say that, you know, when it comes to, you know, going in the interview room, uh, we usually in the pageant world, we usually give our intro as well, just like in pro cheer. So it's very, very similar. And uh, you're then asked to sit down. And I, I'm not really sure exactly if if pro cheer um, has the timer anymore or whatnot for um, interviews. I know when I know that when I did the interview for blast, it was just kind of like the intro and a question. Um, mm -hmm. But when I did the interview for the Panthers, it was you're you're going into a room by yourself and you have a few minutes. So, um, you know, I, I guess every team is different. But uh, definitely, I would say that you need to carry yourself with confidence. Um, you need to be confident in your answer. And if you Honestly, if you if you mess up, you know, don't 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 dwell on it. 
you know, uh, kind of laugh it off and just keep going. I mean, honestly, it is a conversation at the end of the day and they don't want to hear a pageant patty. They want to hear you. You know, they don't want to hear what you've been practicing in your mind for because like Janine said, like if you mess up, like if you've been trying to if you're trying to say something that you rehearsed, it will sound rehearsed. And if you mess it up, then it will mess it will mess you up. Um, usually one of the things that I do, <laughs> one of my tricks whenever I am caught up on a question that I'm like, hmm, how do I answer this question? It always begins with education. <laughs> <laughs> Even on stage, <laughs> when you're on stage and you have to answer final question and you get caught up, it all starts with education. <laughs> we first have to educate <laughs> ourselves on the matter and, you know, just go from there. Usually that's a good filler. <laughs> oh, I've never heard of that one. That's a good one. I learned that trick when I was preparing for final stage questions the day of the Elite Miss Earth pad. And I was like, what can I say if I get caught up? Ah, education. <laughs> Start with education. <laughs> That's great. That's great. And, and here's the thing, guys. I mean, they want, they genuinely, for the most part, judges, they want to get to know you. It's not, the interview round isn't there to stump you or to trick you or to like put you in a nervous situation where you mess up. They don't want you to mess up. They don't want you to fail. They want you to succeed. So if you go into it knowing that, that the judges on the other side of the table are your friends and it's just a conversation, it just makes it so much easier to get through that process and really just relax into it. Um, because if you don't, if you look at them like, you know, the evil people, like with, you know, horns, like that's how you're going to come across. So literally just go in, have fun with it and just, you know, be yourself, right? Just be yourself and be fun. But if you have been, you know, showing up for yourself as a positive, uplifting, sunshine type of person, then that's how you're going to come across in front of the judges. And that's what they want. Like you are literally auditioning for a position as a cheerleader, as a dancer, as an ambassador, as someone that interacts with fans. And so they want to know that you have a personality, that you're bubbly and that you can get along with other people. Mm -hmm. And so practice that day in and day out if that's not who you are right now, because that's how we should be showing up every day, all day anyway, right? Like that's yeah. who we are. That's who I know I strive to be as a human is someone that um, looks at life with a, as a glass that is half full, not half empty, right? That looks yeah. at life, you know, in a very positive manner, even though there's hard times, right? Yeah. And um, sometimes with the judges, like, you know, I don't. I haven't seen it yet. Um, well, have I seen it with the pro cheer side? I don't recall seeing it so much um, on the pro cheer side, but I know on the pageant side, sometimes they will throw it. They'll, they'll tell one of the judges to look stone faced, like he's un, like he's you know doesn't care about anything you have to say, even though he does. But then they'll have a judge that looks smiley, and then they'll have, you know so they yeah. they try to they want to see they. Can you keep up that smile and that perkiness and that excitement, even when the crowd is not looking interested in anything you have to say? Like, you know, and so that's one of the that's one of the things that they throw in there sometimes in the pageant world. Um, I think I might have seen it once on the pro cheer side uh, with the Panthers that, you know, because with, with them, we had the panel interview. So but yeah, you got to just be able to like when you're in an interview, you got to smile, confident, focus, you know. Even when the even when the judge that's not smiling at you at all asks a question, you have to you know smile at him. Try to see if you can get him to smile. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know and one of the other things that I, I I usually like to coach my girls to do is to um, try to try to try to see if you can figure out the judge's eye color, like when you're talking to them, like really mm. talk to them. So like try to see if you could you know, like, don't look weird at them. <laughs> like, don't, don't, don't be weird about it. Don't be but crazy. Try, but try to see if you can, like, you know, look them in the eyes and, and, and of course, engage and, and just see if you can figure out their eye color <laughs> when you're talking. Um, so, yeah, like, I, I would definitely uh, suggest, like, try to keep up your excitement and, and your perkiness and such when you're in an interview room. 
And one thing about the application I wanted to touch on real fast is that, yeah. you know, when it comes to the application for a pro chair, um, make sure that you have something to contribute to every section of that application. I uh, have not done, I have not, if, if you have not done everything like on the application that uh, then I would actually take that, take note of that particular area and try to start working on that. So that way the next year, whether you make the team or not that year, the next year you, you know, you can beef up your application with what you have done. Um, and it, you know, start filling it out. Cause you don't want to have like, okay, dance, you know, she's like literally a star in dance. She works or whatever. Great. But community service zero. <laughs> like you don't, you don't, you know, um, you, you want to make sure that, you know, volunteer zero, like you want to make sure that, um, accomplishments that you have something like make sure, try to work on filling out every area in that application every year. Yep. Love that. Love, love, love that that you mentioned. And it ties into what we said earlier about not lying. So if you can't be truthful and transparent and honest on your resume, then you can't include it. Right. But the good news is now you know what section should be on your resume because you're here, you're showing up for yourself, you're learning and you're going to take action tomorrow. <laughs> then you can start working on these things, working on any area. So Case in point, I had an interview with a TV station in Richmond, Virginia for a primetime anchor position. And they asked me like what community service activities that I'm currently involved in and what I'm passionate about. So I was able to answer the things that I'm passionate about. And I said, you know, in all honesty, unfortunately, I don't have the time right now to be involved in community service activities, but it is something that I would love to get back into. I would love to join a grad chapter for my sorority and be able to, you know, get involved in community service through my sorority. And so I was upfront and I was very honest about that. Right. But what I should have been doing is reminding myself what I tell my PCP lovelies and our other clients. And I should have at least had, you know, something that I could have said that I was doing from a community service aspect. Right. So now you guys know and you can start working on these things so that you can build your resume and for it to look extremely attractive. So thank yeah. you for bringing that up. Um, so guys, I would love to open it up for questions. We have a couple of minutes before we're going to hop off. So if you can um, just put question in all caps, and that will kind of help me be able to kind of sort through all of the comments and stuff that we're getting. Um, I am going to be looking in IG as well. So if anyone over here in IG, if you all have any questions for Kies, I will um, mention those as well for you guys. And uh, we can just kind of start now with any questions for Kies before we let you guys go. And don't forget, we are going to announce the winner for whoever did um, their score and put that in our Facebook group from last night. We are going to be announcing the winner um, for uh, last night, tonight. So we'll be announcing that um, tonight. So let's see. Here we go. So Julia says, how do you avoid saying filler words like um and like during interviews? Great question. I would say that you can do uh, one or two things. The first is repeat the question back. That gives you some time to think of your what to say. And the other thing is, you know, it's okay to, to take a couple seconds to get your thought together so that you don't say, um, or like, you know, if someone asks you a question such as how would you change the world given today's state and climate? Like you can sit there, you can, you can sit there and say, you know, okay, how would I change the world in today's state and climate. Well, one of the things that I would do, you know, like that's actually giving you some time to think about it or you can, or after they ask a the question, you could, well, one of the ways, <laughs> you know, it's okay yeah. to think first before talking. You don't have to start talking um, immediately after they ask a the question, but definitely try to like not take longer than five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and that you answer that perfectly because you want to give your your brain a second to kind of just 
think about it. And so we recommend the same thing where you just answer the question in a complete sentence, right? So given today's, you know, state and climate, I would change the world first by blah, 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 blah. So again, it gives you like five, 10 seconds to really think about what it is that you want to say. Another thing is, is thing is be mindful of your pace. So when you're trying to talk extremely fast and your brain doesn't have the opportunity to catch up with your mouth, that's when the alms come in because you're, you're, you're talking so fast that you can't think to say the word fast yeah. enough. So instead of saying the word that you really want to say, you say, um, yeah. right. <laughs> so that's another thing. Slow it down. Yeah. Like you don't have to race through your answer. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that preparation is key. Right. So when you are preparing for any type of interview, you should be thinking about the questions that you might get and you should be preparing just in case. And then that way, nine times out of 10, you may not get the exact question, but likely an answer for one of the questions that you did prepare and work on might fit really good with another question that you actually do get. Right. So just really being mindful of that and making sure that you're preparing ahead of time will really help you with not saying um as well. Right. Right, so exactly. Great, great, great. Um, all right. As I say, um. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. It okay. it. It's a tricky it one. It does. <laughs> it does. Uh, so this one, is there a time limit when you're telling the judges about yourself? So it depends on the team. And so if you don't mind, Kies, because I know you mentioned a couple of teams that you have auditioned for. So if you could kind of think through each of those teams and answer that specifically, it really does depend. So for example, the Ravens, the Baltimore Ravens cheerleaders, they want your intro speech to be pretty concise and relatively short, about 20 seconds or less. For the first ladies of football, it would be a minute, like 45 seconds or less. Wizards, when they normally do their intros, which are finals, it's like a quick little punchy, sassy little intro um, on stage at the finals. And so I would say that's probably like two or three sentences or less. So it really does depend on the team. But the wonderful thing is, is that they are not going to set you up to do it wrong. So they will normally tell you or give you an example of what they're looking for or tell you how long they expect it to be. So I'll let you answer that now just based on the teams that you've auditioned for. Yes. Um, so for the for the first day of the football, I actually my what I what I told you all that was like literally almost my speech <laughs> about myself, which was probably about up to a minute, like Janine said. Um, but for the Baltimore Blast, they didn't want all that. <laughs> they wanted, they wanted, they were very specific. They're like, we want a short <laughs> intro. So I literally had to cut it down to like, you know, my name is Kiaz from Miami, Florida. 20, I was your 2018 Elite Miss Earth USA national <laughs> title holder, proud graduate of Florida International University with a bachelor's degree in economics and international relations. And I currently work as a financial advisor for the United States Air Force Reserve. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so it, it really it does depend on the team but yeah like there that's why it's just kind of like you know i kind my thing my rule of thumb is you know what let me let me write out everything i would like to say and then based on the time limit i'll cut back let me yeah. figure out the best you know the best lines um, so, you know, that's, that's how I do it. I know, um, generally I try to aim for 30 seconds or less. Yeah. Perfect. And the wonderful thing guys about it is yes, you rehearse it. You want to know what you're going to say, but you don't rehearse it so much that if you have to modify, change it or cut it down or add to it, that it doesn't throw you off. Right. So you've got to be flexible, moldable, adaptable throughout this entire process. Um, yeah. so someone on IG asked about the three things, uh, that you need to do when presenting your best self. Uh, and just so you, cause she's like, I had to drop. It's your application, your resume and your photos. So with the presentation, we don't want you to forget about those three components. So your application, your resume and your photo. Next question here. What has been the most hard or surprising question you were asked during an interview or one that caught you off guard? I'll answer this because I just, again, went through a five round interview process recently <laughs> and I'm still awaiting the outcome. But the fact that I made it to round five says a lot. But one question that stumped me was, what is something about where you live now that most people don't know? 
I that like I like literally was like, oh, my goodness. I think that I answered it pretty well. I kind of turned to the fact that people here. So for those that don't know, I'm actually right now in Oak Hill, West Virginia. It's southern West Virginia, super small town. And I just spoke to the fact that people here, the stereotypes of West Virginians so far from the people that are here and how warm and caring and open hearted everyone his is here in the town. So I think I sort of nailed it, but I wasn't expecting that question. I don't think that I've ever gotten that question. So Kies, what about you? Uh, to be quite honest, I can't think of a question that ever stumped me so much or that was too hard in an interview. Um, but I do know of, um, I mean, that I would say that I, that I wasn't able to figure it out. But I would say that one of the questions that I dread <laughs> Or that not so much that I dread, but I know most people dread, especially some of the girls that I coach for the pageants, is um, what has been your biggest failure and mm -hmm. how did you overcome it? <laughs> that is a question that seems to stump a lot of girls because no one wants to talk about their failures. Right. And, um, you know, and so it tends to or even the question of tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. For whatever reason, <laughs> that question tends to stump a lot of girls. And I'm like, because I, I, I mean, honestly, I don't know why it does. But, you know, one of the things I will say in those kind of situations is that, you know, OK, tell us about your biggest failure and how you overcame it. Honestly, it's it, you don't look weak for failing at something. Um, and, you know, if and and definitely overcoming it is. I would say your biggest failure should be a lesson that you now have applied to your life. So that way it's no, it's no longer looked at as a failure. It's looked at as a lesson that you've learned. And so therefore you have kind of switched it up to now be a positive. Um, and when it, and when the whole tell me about yourself question, uh, which tends to stump a lot of people, usually that is your time to tell them about your, like, you know, who you are as far as who you've been, and where you're going like you know i like who i am as a person i've been a a dreamer i've been you know a a, a mother i am a mother um <laughs> i i enjoy doing this i love doing that i i aspire to be this i you know i'm hoping to change the world in this way like it's it's one of those things where i like to say you know talk about something that you do talk about something that you hope to do <laughs> And then also talk about something that you enjoy. And that kind of answers the tell me about yourself question. Yeah, I love that. That is such great, great advice. I think the reason people get stumped there is because one, they don't think that they really have anything interesting to share about themselves, even though they are, they're amazing, but they don't look at themselves as amazing. So that's one thing that stumps people. The other thing is they they try to tell too much. Yeah. Like they go back to, oh, well, when I was born back in the day and you know, like they try to give your whole life story but you got to like kind of keep it focused. And so in the pageant world, exactly like the categories that you just mentioned, perfect, right? You know, for pro cheer, if they want to know who you are as a person, right? Like what you do, you know, professionally, your dance background, you know, specific to things that would be relatable as an ambassador for that team, your community service that you love to interact with people, things like that. So you've got to make it relevant to the job that you're applying for and really think about, well, what would impress them? And then you answer it based on that. So wonderful question there, Stephanie. I think that that was a great, great question. And here's the thing too, guys, if you're properly prepared, then really no, a question might surprise you as, oh, that's a good one, but no question should stomp you. The only questions that I have definitely seen that have stomped people would be when, what years did our team win the Super Bowl? Oh, <laughs> who, what's the name? Yeah. You know, who is our current quarterback? Who is your favorite football player and why? You know, has this team ever made it to or what years did this team make it to the NBA finals? Things like that, like questions that have specific answers that you just don't know the answer to. So, again, there are some teams that ask those types of team related questions that you need to be prepared and you've got to study so that you can answer. Yeah, like you can go on uh, whatever team it is that if you're 
NFL team, you can look up their stats um, on NFL.com. You can look up the yep. NBA stats on NBA.com. You know, even MASL, if you're trying to do the pro, pro tier uh, soccer league, like, you know, it's, it's, uh, you definitely, and I would say when, when, you know, go on whatever team page you're trying to audition for, this is what I do, go on the team page of whoever you're auditioning for and look up like the stat, they have their stats there for that, yeah. for their specific team. And then I would also look up the coaches information. See, so, cause you might get a question about a coach, you know, like, and, and even, and then I go and I stalk the cheerleader page and I, <laughs> <laughs> and I look up their coach information and, you know, so I would say like, you should know, you know, you should kind of like stalk <laughs> the team that you're trying to be a part of because you know yeah. that if that's your team, then you 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 need to stalk them. <laughs> yeah, Google, Google and Wikipedia are your friends. So remember that Google and Wikipedia are your friends. All right. So we're going to go through some questions kind of fast. We actually have a lot left and I want to be respectful of your oh, time okay. and everyone else's time. No problem. And, and I do have to put together my 11 p.m. newscast. <laughs> okay. Okay. So here's here's the next question. Um, how is the dance style different for soccer versus NFL and NBA? Okay, so from what I've, from my experience with the NFL um, dances, they are definitely um, more cheer, more cheery. Um, uh, like they still incorporate, you know, some fierce dancing in there as well, but they like to see the high kicks. They like to see, you know, like they do a little bit more um, technique. Big movements. Yeah, big, big movements yeah. and technique. Um, yeah. For NBA, uh, definitely, for, well, I'm from Miami. So <laughs> our NBA team <laughs> definitely although you must like technique needs to be there for sure like it's amazing you gotta be a very very skilled technical dancer to even get on there but then of course when it comes time for the performance you gotta have like a lot of that hip-hop you know energy and just slay slay like uh, <laughs> they um they're not so cheery they're not like movements like this they're more definitely quicker movements and then for the soccer, I would say the, the soccer dances are kind of more, they're kind of a blend of both, honestly, mm -hmm. um, because we've had, um, you know, Baltimore Ravens come in to do some of our choreography, but then we've also had like, you know, some choreographers who have worked with NBA teams also come do our choreography. And so we kind and so they kind of blend the styles um, together for the MASL. Yeah, and definitely for Liz. Liz is really good at making sure that you all are very diverse in what mm -hmm. you put out on the field. So for sure. Okay, here's the next question from Michelle. Um, what is your why? So why do you why do you want to be a professional cheerleader? Like, what is driving you to want to do that? Well, for me, I've just. I mean, it's it's been a dream. <laughs> Uh, I was a cheerleader, of course, back in grade school, and I. I really enjoy that aspect of performance. Um, I'm also a team player. Like I, I enjoy being a part of a group of fierce. Well, now it's women and men. Um, to to like just a team that that that's just as energetic and excited to perform for a crowd just as much as I am. Um, I'm directable. I can take constructive criticism. So you know, and I apply the 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 corrections right away. So. Honestly, I feel like I would be a great team member for any uh, cheer team or dance team that I am a part of. But I just love to I just love the performance aspect of it. And I love to help out others when need be. So, you know, I'm I'm usually like the first to arrive to practice and the last to leave because I want to make sure that I am looking just as fierce to be able to, to, to deserve a spot on that team. So um, but yeah, my why is because I just love I, I love performing. Yeah, love, 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 love that. All right, so Julia says, thanks so much. Such a helpful answer for the question that she had earlier. Okay, here's the next question. Um, how was the transition from pageant to pro cheer? Was it challenging to your schedule? Is it possible to do both at the same time? I'm a current title holder and curious. Oh, well, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> yes, congratulations. <laughs> uh, definitely, it is possible to do both at the same time. Um, however, it depends at the same time. <laughs> I say that because, you know, if you are, if you are a state title holder and you are, need, and you need to go to nationals, 
um, or your national title holder and uh, you have to go compete at internationals. Well, if that is going to be during the time of the season for the cheer team that you want to be a part of, it's it's going to take um, it's probably going to take you away from practice as well as maybe a performance or two. And you just have to, you know, if your coach is okay with that, then great. But there are some teams where if you miss one or two practices, you're done. Like, you know, and you'll have to just wait until next year. So you, it really, you would need to um, find out exactly when your, when your next pageant is going to be that you're going to be required to compete at and try to see if it would work with the schedule of the cheer team. Um, and if so, then yeah, it's definitely possible. But if not, then I would say that, you know, I mean, as a title holder, you've kind of committed to that title already. So definitely, um, you know, just continue to prepare and probably try to attend the events that the cheer team does. So that way you can like get to know them. So they know that you are interested. And once you are done with your title, you will be coming out for their team. Um, as far as the transition between pageant and pro cheer, honestly, uh, it's like it's like we're next door neighbors. Um, because, <laughs> because I'm currently on, on staff with the Miss Earth USA organization and uh, our director was a former uh, Kentucky uh, cheer, what's the Kentucky team? I forget, Chiefs, the Chiefs. She's a former Chiefs yeah, and also she was a former Rams cheerleader. So she, and she literally, uh, you know, the jobs that she had she made sure that those jobs would work around her cheer dreams instead of her cheer dreams working around those jobs. So, um, but yeah, pro cheer and, and, and pageants are like sisters. <laughs> <laughs> so, so true. It really, really are. It's kind of interesting. Okay, so here's the next one. Um, holding the Miss Earth title carries a lot of responsibility. What was the most challenging part of the experience and what were some of your proudest achievements? Great, great. Question. Okay. Um, so it definitely does, uh, was a lot of responsibility. Um, one of the most challenging parts of the experience was the job requirements for the title. But also at the time, I had a corporate job as well with not a lot of vacation time. So, um, you know, I had to definitely finesse a lot of things in order to be able to take off to go fly here or fly there or, you know, um, it, 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 it definitely did, uh, take a toll on my corporate job. It definitely was a little bit strenuous on my, um, family life in regards to, you know, when my, cause my son was younger at the time. So having to arrange for babysitters and stuff like that. So I would say the, um, traveling portion of the, of being a title holder, a national title holder, um, was probably the heart of what's well, probably not the hardest, but the, a challenging part of the job. Um, and, uh, what are some of the proudest uh, achievements? I would honestly, I would say just my, pr one of the, one of the ways that you know that you did the title right is when you have, when, when you have more girls coming out to compete for your title than the girls you competed against. Mm. So by the time that I, uh, it was time for me to give up my title, I had doubled the um registration for the girls <laughs> like and i was like oh great <laughs> all right here's the crowd <laughs> but yeah it was uh definitely i would say that was one of the proudest achievements and then also i was able to travel to thailand to cover the miss uh universe 2018 pageant with catriona gray winning so that also was a pretty proud thing i was able to interview all the girls there um for the title of miss universe and it was fun so cool. So cool. We got a superstar. I right, I'll do this one really quick. When it can, comes to the freestyle portion of the audition, how long is it? And do you do it directly after the routine? So it depends on the team and the audition process. There's no like formula to tell you, but I do want you to attend on Thursday because we're going to be going over freestyle and all of that. But long story short, it could be an entire round and they just play the music and you just don't know, like, and then they hit stop. So it could be 30 seconds to a minute long. It could be just two eight counts of a routine or four eight counts of a routine. It could be um, before a dance or after the dance. Like there's really no rhyme or reason. It just depends on the team and the actual audition. So what we tell people is to prepare for at least a minute 30 
That way you're good to go no matter what. Um, and you're going to put your most powerful stuff first. I don't want to give away all of the, the goodies for Thursday, but we have tons of tips on how to, you know, make sure you perfect that. The next question here, um, are you timed for the overall interview? So it depends. Uh, most of the time they are going to give you a block of time. So maybe it's a 15 minute block or a 30 minute block where you're going into maybe a room and it's a panel, but they'll tell you what that portion is. And sometimes it could just be literally like Kies mentioned earlier, where it's your intro speech and they just ask you one question. So it really, again, just kind of depends on the team. Hey, Stacy. So one of the questions I guess that you may have mentioned she got during her Vegas um, Golden Knights interview. So good to see you here, girlfriend. <laughs> uh, let's see another question. Here we go. Uh, the tell, tell me about yourself question always catches me off guard. Great answers. Thank you for sharing. Hey, Malika. Let's see. These are interview. These interview tips are great. Thank you, Anna. All right. I think we actually might be done here with the questions. Let's see. Here's one. Janine, that was a great answer. I am certain you did a phenomenal job on your interview. Yes, fingers crossed, guys. Hope we all find out soon here. Oh, okay, <laughs> wonderful. I think that that might be all the questions. Let me just check on IG really quick to make sure that we don't have any here. And I think we might be good. Oh, I think one just came up on here. Okay, yep. Here we go. How do we find when teams are doing audition prep workshops? So do you want to answer that one really quick? So usually um, you would just go on whatever teams you're interested in. I would say uh, every month uh, check their website because uh, they will be dropping when they are going to be doing their prep classes. And, um, you know, also there was a website before that used to kind of have like all the team auditions. Um, ultimate cheerleaders. Yeah, I think with ultimate cheerleaders, that's yeah. also a good one. Um, but yeah, uh, and if the team... If you go on your team's website and they have the email list, sign up for that because they will email you to let you know when they're doing their prep classes and workshops. Perfect. All right. And then so closing out tonight, I'm so sorry. I, I, I told Kies, I was like, I'm trying not to keep you all night. And then I kept you all night. So I'm so sorry. Um, if you could, I mean, just any last minute thoughts, advice um, on, you know, just people that are here thinking about becoming professional cheerleaders, not quite sure that they're ready to, you know, jump into that preparation process and go for it. Just any last minute thoughts um, before we wrap up? You know, um, I would definitely say that to go for it because you know it's better to have a regret i'm sorry not a regret what would you say a <laughs> i will actually i would i would probably say it's better to it's better to 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 have a to get that no than to have that regret of you know should i have gone out for it? what would have happened if i did i mean honestly a no is not the end of the world and in order to get your yes Janine said it before in our elite program, you have to be willing to hear it. You have to be willing to hear a no. And so go get so many no's, go get all the no's you can, because eventually you're going to get your yes. And it's better to, to have done something and, and be able, and, and, you know, I wouldn't say failed at it, but be, been able to have experienced it than for you to have a regret of, I wish I would have did it. Um, because, you know, pro cheer does have, um, although, you know, it's, it's, it's not really like, you know, oh, you know, at this age, you can't do it no more, but at, you know, after a certain time frame, you might not even want to do it anymore. So definitely while you're still like in, in your prime and excited, you know, audition and, and keep auditioning, um, until you make it, um, you know, and, and, and sometimes you'll find yourself through these auditions. Uh, I found myself uh, through pageants, honestly. I found I learned more about myself through pageants. And I continue to learn more about myself through the audition process for Pro Cheer. And even upon getting on a Pro Cheer team, I continue to learn more about myself. So I would definitely say to, um, you know, if you're going, like, if, if you're even thinking about it, um, if it's a slight thought of maybe I should, just do it. <laughs> just do it. I mean, at the end of the day, just have fun. Even if you're, even if you're, even if you're not sure if you would make it this year or next year or whatever, but it's something that's been on your mind that you want to give it a go, then go uh, because you can. You may surprise yourself. Uh, you know, definitely go with your best foot forward, but don't don't have a regret. Don't live life with a regret. Perfect. 
Excellent, excellent way to kind of wrap up this evening. I so agree, guys. Like I always say, don't cut yourself. Like, why would you cut yourself? Don't cut yourself. Like show up, go for it, do the thing, because if not, you will live a life of regret and you'll always wonder, you know, if it could have been possible for you. So you got to go for it. Uh, and Kies is one that's always going for it in all areas of her life. She's such a busy bee doing all of the things. And so I so appreciate you taking the time out of your evening to be with us tonight, sharing. I'm sure that you see all of these comments that are coming in, just giving you some love. You know, she, <laughs> Stephanie says, I'll be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> Loving this. Um, thank you for sharing your experience, your story. Thank you so much. Wonderful session. Awesome session, very inspiring and motivational. Great tips. Thank you so much. So again, like thank you for you know, just giving of your time to our community, paying it forward. And now I'm going to let you go to have a great evening and get, get to bed early. I know that you're you're one of those night owls. So I challenge you to, to unwind and go to bed early tonight. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Well, thank you so much. Grace. I do appreciate it. Thank you for having me and have a good night, everyone. Right, bye. <laughs> bye. Oh, thanks guys so much. Again, you know, just the love that you give. Um, again, you, you give those compliments, you give that positivity, you give, 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 and then you will be in that state, that perfect state to be able to receive. So absolutely love it. Love the support that you all are showing last night and tonight. Thank you so much again for showing up for yourself, but then also being willing to give to those that are giving of themselves as well. So really quick, um, just another quick reminder, I want to kind of throw up the schedule for you so that you have it here. Make sure that you're aware of what's going on. Tomorrow night is all about dance. We've got uh, Luna coming on from the Dallas Cowboys Rhythm and Blue. Thursday is freestyle choreography. We're giving away the two thousand two $1,000 scholarships for the Pro Cheer Playbook program. And then Friday, it's all about getting Pro Cheer ready. So really just want to make sure that you all stick with it. Hang out with us every single night. We don't do this often. So it's a treat to be able to kind of learn from the pros, ask questions directly of them. We also have replays. So obviously be sure to uh, you know, watch the replays if you missed last night or if you're joining in a little bit late tonight and you missed tonight. I also want to make sure that you know Sadie uh, made a comment about this in the comments here. We do have an audition schedule that we put out for free. So if you want to get that audition schedule and it's not just, oh, here's the team and here's their website. It's here's the team, here's the website, here's when their prep classes start, here's when their audition starts. Like it gives you all of the things. And we do that for the NFL and the NBA. So you can actually grab that from us as well, because we do offer that as a resource. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to uh, do really quick is just say thank you to my team, say thank you to Sadie, to Janet, to Jim that are behind the scenes helping make this possible, to all of our coaches uh, that have been showing up live, Leanne and Jeanette and all like everybody just helping to make all of this possible. We have an amazing team of women that are here for you every single step of the way. So really quick, wanted to also show you what it is that you'll need to do for day two. Want to make sure that you get credit for being here live, number one, but then also get credit in the Facebook group. You'll go back to the Prep to Pro Facebook group, and this gives you that opportunity to be able to win that $1,000 sideline prep you know, scholarship, which is super cool. So of the six items you should have on your resume, how many of them do you actually have already? So you can get a six out of six, or if you only have two of the items, then you get two points there. And then we want you to find this post in our Prep to Pro Facebook group. All you have to do is jot down your answer to get credit for actually doing your homework. It's that simple. And then your name goes into the pot and you actually win a prize. So again, we're truly, really trying to make sure that we're kind of bribing you guys to do all of the things and to put yourself first. So I am going to announce the winner for tonight, Tuesday. They are going to receive a free one-on-one -on -one session from us. Any session that they would like, they are going to receive. And so the winner is, yay, if you can see this, 
Jan Pittman, she is, I believe, on here uh, live with us tonight, but definitely someone that was super, super, super engaged throughout the entire evening last night. Really do love that engagement. Really do love you being involved. And you are our winner for last night and technically today. So congratulations to you. Super excited that you're going to be able to work with us in a very deep way through that one-on-one -on -one session. So all you have to do is just email us at info at sidelineprep.com so that you can we can give you steps on how to actually claim your prize. So super excited. <laughs> she says, woo! So super excited. I'm so excited. Thanks, ladies. You are so welcome. Pat yourself on the back because you obviously are the one that put in the work to actually win this award. So congratulations for showing up for yourself and doing all the things that you needed to do in order to be our winner. So I know that I've kept you guys for quite some time. We started at eight. It is almost 10 o'clock at night, but this is what we do. We just love to, you know, give, give, give and help you understand and know what it's going to take to go pro. Because if at the end of the day, you don't end up working with us, we still want to give you plenty of information, tools, resources, steps, and tips that you can take with you and literally start making progress tonight, making progress tomorrow. The most important thing, guys, is to have faith in yourself that it is possible for you to accomplish your goals and to accomplish your dreams. In this case, to become a professional cheerleader, to become a semi-professional cheerleader. If you have that faith, and belief in yourself that it's possible, and then you put forth extraordinary action, you can make it happen. You can make it happen. So it's just those two things. And I mentioned the book earlier, Miracle Equation. In order to create a miracle in your life, in order to accomplish that goal, accomplish that dream, you just need those two things. Faith in yourself and put forth extraordinary action. And if you do that, then anything is possible for you. And now if you want to fast track your way to success and fast track your way to the pros, that's where sideline prep comes in. That's where we help you. That's where we're your guide. We're your coach. We're your cheerleaders helping you along the way. OK, well, that is all that I have for you tonight. Be sure to join us tomorrow. Like I mentioned, it's going to be all about the dancers workout. We'll have Jeanette on probably at the start to talk about fitness. And then um, Luna is joining us to talk about her experience with the Dallas Cowboys Rhythm and Blues. Super excited to have her on as well. And we hope to see all of you there as well tomorrow night. Until then. Put yourself first, guys. You like literally you're doing what you need to do. Now you just have to take action. OK, just take action on just one thing that you learned tonight. Get in that Prep to Pro Facebook group. Tell us what your score is so that you can add your name to possibly win that scholarship, because all it takes, guys, is just one percent improvement every single day to make huge, huge results by the end of the year, by the end of the month, by the end of the week. OK, focus on yourself, focus on your goals, focus on your dreams and take action and it will come true. You can make it happen. OK, you're so welcome. I love, love, love this community so much. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, thank you for being here and thank you for showing up for yourself. Love, love, love it. Yes, Sadie, faith in yourself and put forth extraordinary effort. I love it. OK, guys, that's it. I am signing off for Sideline Prep and all of our Sideline Prep coaches wishing you success in all that you do. Cannot wait to see you guys here tomorrow night. Talk to you later. Bye.